Hi, I'm Neil and welcome to another How I Shot This video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up and then edited this photograph using just one speed light, some candles and an awesome bride and groom. So let's crack on. So this photograph is actually hot off the press um, as I took it at a wedding that I photographed just last weekend. Sammy and James's wedding was absolutely amazing. I loved it. From a photography point of view, it was just one of those days where everything seemed to go perfectly. It was just seamless, like n there was no stress at all. And it's, it's really not often that I can actually say that, but it really was the case for this wedding. The weather was brilliant. It was at Eve's Hall, which is a beautiful venue and one which I know well. It's actually where I've been holding my recent workshop and everyone just had the best day and best of all Sammy and James were just amazing to work with such a genuine lovely couple who put their entire trust in me to photograph the wedding how I wanted and I love that I was genuinely so pleased that the day went as well as it did for them because they really did deserve it so just before I talk about the creative photograph which this video is about I thought it would just be nice to show you just a short slideshow of some of my favorite photographs from Sammy and James's wedding because although I absolutely love the creative portraits which I take uh, and that's what this video is obviously all about I just want to show you that the portraits are actually a very small part of the day in the way that I work I see the portraits as being like the cherry on the top of a cake the photography cake but that photography cake is made up of lots of real moments and the portraits are just that little finishing touch, if, if, if that makes sense. Um, because I shoot virtually the whole day in a documentary way because I want the day to happen as it would do, as if I wasn't even there. And then because everything is happening so naturally, what I hope is that when Sammy and James look back on their photographs, when all my couples look back on their photographs, I hope that they will remember not only how their wedding day looked, but also how it felt. Hi Neil, we've just finished watching the slideshow for about the 20th time and we both love it so much. The moments and emotions you capture just take us right back to the day. You're so talented, you make it look easy and we can't thank you enough for all your hard work. You've given us the best wedding present ever, capturing all the moments and memories that will last forever. Thanks again from the Cliffs. So a, a massive, genuine, massive 
thank you to Sammy and James for sending me that little video. It really means a lot to me. And as I said, they, they're just the nicest couple and I can't wait for them to see all their photographs. So on to the main part of the video uh, and how I shot this photograph. So the setup for this shot was really simple and the whole thing from setting it up to actually taking the final shot only took two or three minutes at the most. This photograph, as with most of my off-camera flash photographs, is about finding an interesting composition and then exposing for the brightest thing in the frame first. When we do that, everything else in the frame will be underexposed and that's when we can start to see the potential for a creative shot. This photograph was taken in the hallway at Eves Hall, which is a really beautiful space. It's quite dark too, with really nice light, so it's the perfect space for an off-camera flash portrait. You can see where I took the photograph and my setup here. You may notice that there are actually two speed lights here, but in the end, I didn't feel as though I needed the one that I was going to have behind Sammy and James, so please just ignore that one. <laughs> just to pretend that's not there. So I knew that this glass table would provide me with a really cool reflection. And I put two candles on the table as well to provide some interesting foreground bokeh to the right hand side of the frame. I shot this with my Sony A9 with my Samyang 35mm lens attached. And I took my exposure from the candles because as I say, when we expose for those bright areas, everything else goes dark. Uh, I shot it at 1.4, uh, aperture 1.4, because uh, that will give me the best foreground bokeh. And my shutter speed was at 125th of a second and my ISO was 125. I placed the speed light, which would be lighting Sammy and James from the front at a 45 degree angle to where I was going to ask them to stand. And I set this flash to 132 power. I also attached a magma grid and a mag sphere to this speed light as well. The grid helps to narrow the spill of the light and the sphere just helps soften the light. Using them together actually might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but I do find that they work really well together. If I pause the video here, you can see the angle at which I actually took the shot to create the reflection. To get the reflection, I put my lens on the very edge of the glass so it was virtually touching. As I had everything set up, I only needed Sammy and James for a minute or so and then we were done. And so here is the raw file of my favorite shot from this setup. What I'll now do is take the image into Lightroom so you can see how I edited this image. Once in Lightroom, I start by adding my preset. I then change the overall exposure of the image before changing the white balance. I then crop the image and darken the edges by using the vignette tool and a gradient filter on the left hand side. After that, I play with the right hand side of the image by firstly using another gradient filter and increasing the clarity and then by using a brush to change more specifically the bottom right hand corner just to bring out more detail in this area. I then felt as though the ceiling area behind Sammy and James was a little bit too bright so with a brush I carefully select this area and bring back the highlights. When doing this, pressing O on the keyboard will highlight the area you've selected in red and pressing Alt will allow you to erase certain areas that you may have painted over by mistake. As this area is also reflected, I obviously had to do the same to the bottom half of the image too. After that, I used a spot removal tool to remove my flash purposely had left in the frame because the closer the light source, the softer the light. So I will often keep the, the light source, i.e. my flash, in the frame. That means that I'd obviously then need to clone it out. So I removed that using the spot removal tool before bringing out more detail in the bottom right hand corner of the frame. Finally, I reduced the highlight on James's nose and with that, the image was finished. So here was the original RAW file and here is my final edited version exported from Lightroom. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. 
If you have, I would really appreciate it if you could please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. Also, if you have any questions, please do feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will answer them as best I can. So, thank you very much and I will see you next time.